Hi, everyone. This is Hunter Satterfield, uh, one of the uh, partners here at CWA, as well as our chief investment officer. And as always, I am joined by Brad Sanders, the managing director of Tectonic Advisors, and then also Brian Bortz, one of my fellow partners and the head of the CWA Investment Committee here. Uh, this is your November market update. For the, month, for the month of November, the S&P 500 is up 5.6%. Global stocks were up 7.6%. Domestic bonds up 37 And global bonds up 47 So another strong uh, month coming off of October. So Brad, uh, I'd love to come to you first. I mean, we're having our second strong month in a row. So I suppose this whole thing is all over. You want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing technically and uh and why it's probably not quite over yet yeah um I, i'd love to be on here and and be have the pom-poms out uh but th this looks like a typical a bear market rally um if you, if you look at the data um and and you actually look and, and kind of filter out the noise um it's, it's very apparent that we, we still have some work to do to get the economy back on solid footing um, you know, the one thing I always look at just because I, I remind myself that 72% of annual G, uh, U.S. GDP is dependent on the consumer spending. Um, and so if you can kind of figure out consumer behavior, you can kind of tell if we're going to have growth or not. It's it's just really not that it's pretty simple. Um, and and if you looked in, in October, credit card debt hit the, hit like a decade high. Um, the, the consumer, you know, a lot of the people maybe on this call. Um, are kind of in the upper percentiles of income earners and wealth in the in the country, but the middle class and the lower class have really have really been kicked in the teeth this year uh, with inflation and higher energy prices and gas. Um, that credit card number is kind of troubling because that's that's groceries and gallons of gasoline go, go you know going on a, a getting termed out basically, which just means that they're tapped um, and. Um, you know, when you see stuff like that, you know that you've probably got some work to do. And then you have the Fed. I know every time the Fed raises rates or uh, the market goes up because the Fed speaks and then it makes it sound like they're going to be done or moderating the pace of it. And you have bond yields kind of knee jerk based on what the Fed says. Um, but that's not how reality, how things really work. Um, you know, when the Fed raises rates, it takes 18 months for that rate hike to make its way through the economy. So yeah, I know the bond market moves that day and the stock market shuts and jives and does whatever, but for the actual effects of that rate hike to make its way through economically, it takes a while. Think about it. If you've rented a house or if you if you bought a house or you rented a house, you know, you, you your rent is a 12-month deal. So there's a 12-month lag there. So if they're going to raise rates and you and you think it's going to cause rents to go down, it's going to take basically a full year for all of those rental contracts to roll over before you see that in the economic data. And so there's just all of these long-term effects of raising rates and the Fed's just raised rates, boom, 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 boom. So we haven't even felt the full impact of that first rate hike they did in January. And they've done many subsequent more and they're about to do another 50 basis points in December. So it's good news that the Fed is about to moderate the pace of their rate hikes because you know it's gonna be easier for the market to digest. Um, if I was a betting guy, I would say we get 50 in December, 25 to 50 in January, and then a pause for a while just to kind of see how things shake out. Uh, if, if I was going to put some money on black or something, that's that would be my guess. Um, that's all data dependent, though. So that's a good news. And, and the market's up 14 percent in two months. You know, that's much needed. We've all you know, we're going to take it. Uh, but I just think moving forward, I, I'm expecting a, a bouncy first quarter of 2023 at best. Um, and and we're going to have to wait for these rate hikes to move their way through for uh, the Fed to really give some directionality. And then um, before we can really start to see, you know, clear, clear sailing waters, I just think we're going to have to we're going to be kind of in store for more of the same from this year, not necessarily down as much, but definitely from a volatility standpoint. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. And one of the things that, you know, we at CWA are talking about with clients in light of that is yes, we still have volatility and yes, we still have a lot of unknowns as we look at, you know, another CPI print next week, as we look at some continuing increasing interest rates uh, by the Fed. 
at the same time, still long term from that focus, I think it remains to be a very positive outlook because we are, you know, here in this great opportunity to invest uh, with long term money. So, Brian, I want to come over to you since we last recorded, uh, we did have the midterm elections um, and we did have some changes. And one of the things that I know both you and I are getting questions on is related to what are the impacts of those midterm elections uh, potentially on the markets themselves. You want to talk a little bit about what we're uh, sort of thinking through and talking about here internally? Yeah, thanks, Hunter. Um, you know, the, the midterm elections, there's a, an interesting stat in, in my clients who know that I'm a history buff. Um, you know, if you look back from the end of World War II uh, until now, there have been 20 midterm elections. They happen every four years, just like the presidential election. They're just staggered. And 20 out of 20 times, the market has gone up from election day to the following June 30th of the next year. And the reason is the market just hates uncertainty. And so when you have midterm elections where one party takes control of one of the houses, as we've had, now you have gridlock again, the market realizes that really no meaningful policy is probably going to take place and change in the next couple of years. So that uncertainty of the market gets removed and the market likes that. So uh, regardless of which party wins an election in a midterm, uh, uncertainty is removed and the market likes it when uncertainty is removed. So I think that's why you see a little bit more of a positive movement. Um, going back a little bit to what Brad said, I think the, the challenge that we have in this environment still is that the Fed is still taking action and we haven't seen the results of those actions yet. Uh, we will very soon, but um, the action that the Fed takes last month or next week, we're not going to see for over a year yet. So that's one issue that, that everyone has to keep in mind. The other thing is we've talked for more than a year now about volatility and continued volatility. And I think we're going to have that until the energy markets find some happy medium and the labor markets uh, subside a little bit and, and, and ease. Uh, we still have a very tight labor market. We still have very volatile energy costs. And those two things, coupled with what Brad said about consumer spending, is going to drive a lot of volatility into the first quarter of next year. The good news is that we still believe right now as we stand here, and as Brad said, this is all data driven, but we still believe that there is an end in sight and that, uh, you know, some point in 23, things will stabilize. So that's kind of what I'm telling my clients. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you both guys. Um, and of course, we'll be back in front of y'all uh, after the holiday season. Um, with some year-end numbers and, you know, sort of the final look at what happens in this crazy and volatile year that we're dealing with in 22. So thank you so much for tuning in um, and hope you all have a wonderful and happy holiday season.